Hello and welcome to this Simulator Spotlight presentation. My name is Jason Tranter and in this presentation we're going to look at I Teach Gears. Now, as you can imagine, this simulator is all about understanding gears and how they vibrate and how they wear and how the vibration changes and all that sort of thing. So, as you can see, we've got two simple animations of the of the gears rotating and we can change the number of gears and do all of that. We can see the gear mesh frequency and the sidebands, uh, the running speed and the output speed of the gearbox and obviously we can dial in lots of numbers there. Now you might look at this and think, boy, there's a lot of fields here. Well, first off we can dial in a, a frequency or a, a speed of rotation of one and we can see the speed of rotation of the other. I'll just pop that up one and then we can see what the gear mesh frequency is now now we can also look at the prime factors and the common factors because in the case of this uh, gearbox design we can see we've got uh, a number of common factors and prime factors with the greatest number of five and three so let's see what all that means what I'm going to do is damage a tooth and say that tooth was damaged in transit when it meshes with another tooth it potentially will begin to wear that tooth but that tooth meshes with this tooth let's make it a bit more obvious and this tooth meshes with that tooth and this tooth meshes with that tooth and on it goes but because we don't have prime numbers if we watch this just for a little while these particular teeth will only come into contact with certain other teeth from now on we always have the same teeth meshing with the same teeth. And if you look at that, prime factor, the greatest number, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 3, 1, 2, 3. So that means that 5 times the speed of this shaft, 5 times 25 is 125. And 3 times the speed of this shaft, 3 times 41.6 is 125 we potentially generate vibration and we will see that peak and we will see harmonics of that peak. Now why is this actually important? Well if the gear is not designed with a prime number of teeth and let's say in transit the uh, teeth that happen to be meshing when it's in transit or if for any other reason those teeth that come into contact um, are damaged in any way, but well we will see that that damage will wear out only a small number of teeth. We don't want to see any wear, or obviously we want to minimize the wear, but if we operate this gearbox for a period of time, only these teeth will become worn. It will generate a vibration, but the fact is it's wearing out these teeth. Whereas if we chose 31 teeth and 19, which are prime numbers, and there's no common factors, well, other than one, what I'm going to do is fix the teeth, damage a tooth, and let's speed up this animation a good bit. Okay, so this comes into contact with that one, and that one comes into contact with that one, and this one with that one, and that one with that one, and so on and so forth. Well, if we watch this long enough, guess what we'll find? We'll find that one by one by one, every single tooth will come into contact with another tooth that has been damaged. So that means that all of the teeth are sharing that, that wear characteristic. These, this pair will last a lot longer than the pair that we looked at just before. So this is just one of the things we can demonstrate. We can demonstrate the same thing with a hunting tooth problem. So we damage a tooth, it comes into contact, and the hunting tooth frequency is where only these two teeth come into contact again. So we keep watching, we keep watching, waiting here we go right they just came into contact with each other and that's obviously not happening very often that's why we see a low frequency vibration uh, we can simulate all sorts of things and we can see how the vibration is affected we can dial in all kinds of different fault conditions and see how the spectrum changes we can play around with different resolutions and f max values and we can see um, whether the sidebands would be visible, whether we can separate uh, the driven and driver sidebands. We can do all sorts of things uh, with this simulator, including looking at planetary gearboxes. What happens, you know, uh, depending on whether the annulus is turning or the sun or the planets, uh, we can dial in different values and see how it all looks and see what the input and output speeds would be. So 
I teach gears lets us really have a, a good long look at how uh, the vibration changes with different uh, fault conditions. It's perhaps worth saying that we have lots of 3D animations of gears uh, demonstrating all sorts of different faults, eccentricity, misalignment, broken teeth and, and others. And so in the more, more basic class we can use those animations to explain the basics. We don't have to get into something as complicated as this right away. But um, when we do need to get a bit more serious about the frequencies generated, this simulator is great. So I hope you enjoyed that presentation of iTeach Gears and uh, thanks for taking the time to view the presentation.